Welcome back to the AM show. Now to some community development related matters. Activista Gambia is currently implementing a project to strengthen community coping mechanisms against the risk of climate induced conflicts and minimize gender related vulnerabilities and tensions in the country. The UNFPA funded project was initiated under the United Nations Peace Building Funding Supporting Sustainable Programs for Global Stability. Now, activist uh, project manager Mohamed Sise is here to tell us about a venture to build community resilience. Uh, good morning to ha and welcome to the AM show, Mohamed. Thank you very much, Rambai. It's a pleasure being here once again. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now, how effective is dialogue as a process to building sustained peace and communal resilience? Thank you very much. Um, Dialogue is a platform or is an avenue through which people can come together and understand each other's perspective and then that is a very, very important component. You do so, well as you, you, you go that, huh? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> it's a very important component in building community understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, regarding the project, can you expand on it a bit? Yes, the climate change project in sort, as um, mm -hmm. the title goes, it is strengthening community coping mechanisms against the risk of climate-induced conflicts mm -hmm. and also to minimize gender-related vulnerabilities and tensions in the Gambia. This um, project is funded by United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, through the Peace Building Fund, which was launched in 2006, mm -hmm. and the Gambia became eligible to receive these funds in 2017. Mm -hmm. The fund is uh, meant to address um, post-conflict stabilizing um, issues in many countries. That is, uh, countries that have undergone conflicts um, um, would benefit from this fund to stabilize their countries. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it also, it's a cross-cutting issue. It also looks into um, issues of climate change, migration, uh, political participation. So this particular component which we are funding from the UNF which we are benefiting from the funding of the UNFPA looks at climate change and how climate change impacts can lead to conflicts in societies and what could be done to address those conflicts in many countries. How does climate change uh, trigger gender related vulnerabilities and give us some examples here in the Gambia? Yeah, um, if you look at climate change it comes with what we call climate related disasters um, mm -hmm. and also it can cause some so many um, devastating effects on many communities. Mm -hmm. uh, an example is salt intrusion. In some countries or in some communities around the Gambia, this rising sea level has pushed the salt water into the fresh water swamps and that has also um, destroyed or reduced the arable land for rice cultivation in many communities. Mm -hmm. And if you look at most of the communities in Gambia, it is women who cultivate rice or are into rice cultivation. Mm -hmm. So if they lose certain arable land for rice cultivation, you will realize that their source of living or their source of livelihood will be also be affected. Mm -hmm. And that has a very um, devastating effect, effect as far as gender is concerned. Because such women normally um, don't have access to upland um, fields. And then most of those upland fields are um, owned by men. So what you realize that because of the gender disparity there of women cultivating rice more, mm -hmm. then if there is high soil intrusion, then obviously the impact of climate change on gender becomes high on the side of women. Okay, so now in that case, what approach are you using in order to minimize this? Exactly, that is exactly why we went to these communities um, from the 8th of 12th of March, and then we visited five administrative areas in the Gambia, Central River region um, and North Bank region, as well as um, Upper River region. Mm -hmm. Central River region, North and South, these are two different administrative yeah, areas, yeah. and we have North Bank region and um, URR. Mm -hmm. And in every region we went to, we um, had a specific venue we targeted and then held a dialogue there to bring these people together from different communities to discuss climate change issues. So what we did was we tried to ensure they create more understanding of the driving forces behind climate-induced conflicts. Mm -hmm. And now what could be done to address those things? What we have been discussing with them is not to impose ideas onto them, but also to create a platform for them to also give their own views mm -hmm. as to what sort of community-led initiatives they can come up with to address these issues. Mm -hmm. For example, you look at the issue of salt intrusion. Um, in some communities we went, we were uh, very much happy to know that these communities are really taking some efforts, mm -hmm. part of which is um, the um, uh, replenishing of mangroves um, around the river banks, you know, mm -hmm. and the construction of water returns and dikes, these are, and the construction of gabions, these are all initiatives that they are taking to ensure they also cop the devastating effects of climate change. Oh. Ah, very, very so interesting. Very interesting. Now, uh, when we talk about climate change, it's a very, very broad, uh, broad topic, a broad uh, discussion, but what I'm actually really worried about is there are other effects to climate change, not only affecting farming activities of uh, maybe uh, these women, pe uh, women 
but there are other things for example men themselves who actually uh, are hell bent on farming charcoal producing charcoal which actually you know depletes the forest cover and things like that have you educated the masses where you actually went into and tell them that certain activities that we are used to are the things triggering climate change and in the long run affecting their livelihoods through farming and things like that rightly so these are called the anthropogenic actions um, mm. um, um sorry anthropogenic causes of climate change these are the actions that we um, human beings do or the activities we um, venture mm. into that result of climate change impacts and when we went to these communities um, these were issues that were all discussed issues like um, indiscriminate cutting down of trees mm -hmm. issues like um, um, extraction of certain foreign for, uh, forestry products like you're talking about charcoal extraction mm -hmm. sand mining but if you look at the issue of charcoal extraction these communities most of them um, do so not because they don't understand its impacts they do so because they have no other means of um, life survival so that is the reason why we went there to make sure that we also talk to them about how to create some other alternative sources of income than um, depending highly on the um, environment or the forest in particular but what are the other options though yeah one of the other um some of the other options we suggested or oh, that we are that came up during the dialogue where um, venturing into animal husbandry you know um partnering part and all those things things like um petty trading in, in communities and then um you know uh, you realize that most of these communities some of them are uh, um, very close to the borders and mm -hmm. then businesses normally do well there so yeah. we try to Trade enhance their capacity mm -hmm. into establishing their own businesses and then use that as an alternative source of income instead of always depending on the environment for their livelihoods so will you be going back for another tour hopefully very soon the project comes in stages and then it's um, it's it's, a f it's full of activities that mm -hmm. um, every um, activity has its own objective so when we address one we uh, also has to build onto that to ensure it's sustainable Mm -hmm. uh, Mohamed Sise, thank, thank you very so much, much for coming on the AM Show Project Man Manager at uh, Activista Gambia. Gambia.